be against stopping Lizzo to get this win in Arkansas. Uh, you know, just come on and show it less than them because if this is the year 2018 of prophecy, then this could be the year that we possibly get out of here, you know. The, the talks of war, the rumors of war are more high in the air. So this could be the year that we get out of here. And uh, Lord Yahweh Shai is coming back and destroy America and destroy those Karzars that are in our land. This could be that year. You know, it's very highly possible. For behold, we're telling you, hey, the day that's coming, the day coming that shall burn as a as a refire, right? And all the do proud, who are the proud? Esau, he's the proud, right? The banking family, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Gettys, the Warburgs, the Oppenheimers, these are the proud men. These are the top elite. Now you have everyday Joe Six Packs, they proud, but they don't even know why. But these people know that they have all the money in the world and they basically rule everybody. It says, and yeah, all they do do wickedly, right? They are the border of wickedness when you're reading Malachi, the first chapter. They are the border of wickedness. And when you read in uh, Maccabees, the first chapter, it tells you when they took over, evils was multiplied in the earth. So they are the ones that do wickedly, man. Right? And in, in turn, they, they have our people doing wicked. Two-thirds, man. It says they shall be stubble. Stubble is basically like burnt up trees, man. The remnant from trees and stuff burn up. So it says they're going to be stubble, you know. Guess what the word stubble up. See, stubble, shaft, as dry, straw, stubble, origin. Uh, it says to for for raise for straw stubble or wood to assemble. So it's like burn up wood, man. Right. So it says the day coming shall burn them up. He used the analogy of an of an uh, oven, man, because an oven, you know, that's what you know of. The oven is hot. You cut that oven on, on bra or 550, you know how hot it is. You can't stick your head in there for like 10 seconds. So this basically thermonuclear structure is going to be radiant, man. It's going to be extra hot. It's probably going to be 100,000 times hotter than an oven or more. You know, with, with, with radiation behind it. It says, and the day shall come and shall burn them up, says Yahweh of, of hosts of armies shall neither leave them root nor branch right so when when fire burns the forest all the roots and branches basically get burnt up too but this fire here it says neither root nor branch when you look up branches and trees are symbol symbolize of people right the branches are your offspring of the tree right the extension of the tree Meaning, he gonna he basically gonna take take out Esau's like on America. He's gonna take out your whole generation, man, over here. You know, that fire is gonna be just like the fire that that burned up the temple in Jerusalem back when the Romans burnt the temple up. Couldn't nobody quench that fire out, and it's gonna be the same way uh, in the day when the Lord comes. Who's gonna be able to quench that fire? When you read in Second Ezra the sixteenth chapter, who gonna be able to quench it out when that fire burns? You know, who gonna be able to stop those arrows once they've been shot? You know, and it says, <clears throat> verse.
verse 2. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, right? The Son of Righteousness, that's that's talking about Yahweh Shai. They use an analogy of comparing him to the sun because the sun is what, it, it's vital heat for the earth. So Yahweh Shai is going to be that vital heat for the elect church. And the sun basically enlightens, right? You know, he is that enlightened, that enlightened one, the enlightened. He enlightens the uh, the church, man. I get that. Uh, let's see here. It's, uh, I think it's John 1. I want to say 4. In him, John 1 and 4, in him was life. And the life was the life, the light of men verse 9 that was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world so Yahweh Shai is that light man he is that he is that uh that day spring mentioned right here in Luke the first chapter I want to say it's about 77 78 it says through the tender mercy of our our, our our power whereby the day spring from on high have visited us the day spring that's that's your house shy it said have visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness to the elect and in the shadow of death to guide our feet unto the way of peace. So in that shadow of death, right, which is America, he's guiding our feet to the way of peace. In that day, when 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 the thermonuclear missiles are being shot, that's going to be a shadow of death. Also, he's going to he's going to arise with healing in his wings. Meaning he's going to he's going to rise with that security, and that security being uh, the chariots, man. He's going to rise with those chariots and beam us up for protection to bring us through that fire. When you read in Zechariah 13 and uh, 8 and 9, it's going to bring us through that fire. And you shall go forth and grow. You shall be strengthened spiritually. You're going to grow up, right? Basically strengthened spiritually, right? As calves in a stall. It, and it, and it uses the analogy of calves in a stall because when they're fed in the stall, they're what? Protected, right? They grow up protected and secure, right? So the Lord is going to uh, 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 secure us when, when he comes in his wings with the chariots, man. He's going to be that, that light for men. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in that day. That I shall do this, says Yahweh of hosts, man. He said we're gonna tread them down, and that's and that's and that's with thermonuclear strength. And when certain brothers get spiritual powers and come back off the ship to put Esau in order, man, you know. Uh, let's go to one scripture. Let's try Psalms. Psalms 21 and 9. And it says, Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thy anger. The Lord Yahweh shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. And that's going to be Esau and his power structure, his whole system. This whole uh, leftover Roman system is going to be destroyed with two thirds of our own people who continue to walk wickedly with Esau, they will be devoured and destroyed by this fire also, man. You know, because our people walk hand in hand, right, with Esau. So they're going to be destroyed also, man. Zechariah, Zephaniah 1 and 14, the great day of the Lord, Yahweh, it is near and hasted greatly. 
even the voice of of the day of the Lord, the mighty men shall cry there bitterly, right? The captains, these uh, uh, generals, the captains of Esau's military, the men, the men, uh, these men of high stature in Esau's world who have all this money because when the Lord knocks out America, money system, man, whole money, whole that they have lived deliciously off of pursuing the Revelation 18. And the Lord going to knock them out, man. Verse 15, the day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, man. A day of distress. Straits means it's going to be hard times, distress, stress, narrowness. That is trouble, anguish, and distress. So it's going to be a lot of crying, man, a lot of weeping and mourning in that day. A day of wasteness and desolation, right? Desolation means a day of ruin, right? A day of wreck, wrecking. Everything's gonna be tore up, man. Like, like that movie, uh, uh, I Am Legend. You see how everything was all tore up? It's gonna be tore up, like, 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 uh, when you watch the old movie Planet of the Apes, when dude walked walk through and saw everything had been destroyed in America, right? Numbered sand and, and the Statue of Liberty was, was, had fallen, was sticking out the sand. It's going to be a day of ruin, man, a day of darkness and gloominess, man. It's going to be a day of confusion, right? A day of clouds and thick darkness, right? Because the, the fallout from the thermonuclear destruction it's gonna have it's gonna have that them clouds gonna be everywhere, man. It's gonna be so thick, man, from the from the destruction. When that when that when that mushroom cloud goes up and all that ash fall back down, man, all that it's gonna be dark. Basically it's actually gonna be dark. Like confused dark and it's gonna be dark. You know. Eighteen neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even all speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. Because here the, the scripture is in Revelation 18 in one hour, right? It's going to be destroyed, man. And your money is not going to be able to buy you out, right? It might buy you a bunker. To, to make it through the, the initial destruction. It might buy you a spot on the space station to get you out of that initial destruction, but it won't save you from it. And the Lord is going to actually get you. You know, it's going to destroy America. And if you're in a bunker, you're going to get it later. That's just what it is, man. You know, you're going to get it. Uh, started to it says the most high is jealous and the Lord revenge it the Lord revenge it and is furious and the Lord will take vengeance on the, his adversary who is his adversary right adversary is a foe or enemy right so if you're not with the Lord and for the for the law statute commandment and what look the Lord is saying, Yahweh, then you are an adversary. And the main adversary is Esau. Right? I mean, the other nations, the two thirds of our own people. He said he would take vengeance on his adversaries and he reserved wrath for his enemies. That wrath, that wrath is going to come in, in, in uh, famine, pestilence. It's going to come with martial law. Or it's going to come with concentration camp. It's going to come with sedition among men and ultimately the uh, thermonuclear missiles, man. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power. I will not all at all acquit the wicked, right? He will not all acquit the wicked, meaning he won't. He will not. He will not uh, leave you unpunished. He will not uh, uh, basically make you innocent, hold you to be innocent, right? 
right? It says, uh, the Lord Yahweh have his ways in, in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the cloud are the dust of his feet. Man. So he, the Lord is going to be in these missiles, man. He's going to be in these missiles, man. You believe that? You know, he's going to be in the missiles, man, and he gonna, and the missiles are going to be being guided by the and they're going to hit their target. They're going to hit their targets, man. Pursuing the uh, second end of the 16th chapter. They will hit their target, man. And, and he's going to use these Edomites. When you read in Isaiah uh, 54, the way he created the waster, man. He created uh, the Smith, you know, who created the waster. The modern-day Smiths are the scientists, man. And Esau knows the, how to uh, put these... Uh, together he gave this to put the spirit on to know how to put these elements together to create these bombs which they're going to use man you know the evolution of precision guidance systems has eliminated the need for large yield nuclear weapons like the Tsar Bomba but make no mistake the detonation of a one megaton nuclear bomb would yield more destructive power than any weapon the world has ever seen. Weapon, thermonuclear. Yield one megaton surface blast. Energy released. Blast, 50%. Thermal radiation, 40%. Fallout, 10%. Comprehend the true lethality of a thermonuclear explosion requires an understanding of the massive amount of energy that's released upon detonation. When a thermonuclear bomb detonates, an instantaneous fission reaction creates a secondary fusion reaction, fusing hydrogen and its isotopes together to form helium, releasing enormous amounts of energy. And it occurs in a very small volume. Therefore, the total energy divided by the volume is very large. And that means the temperatures are stupendously high. Temperatures that are higher than the center of the sun. Upon detonation, a thermonuclear bomb emits a stream of X-rays, infrared rays, and gamma rays. This is referred to as thermal radiation and is visible to the naked eye in the form of a brilliant flash of light, lasting from 1 to 10 seconds. It emits all of this X-radiation that's absorbed by the air around it. The outside of the air is burning. It's forming basically small reacting. It turns brown, and so the light coming out actually goes down until that burns off, and then it goes up again. The heat from the infrared rays and people and buildings on fire x-rays will irradiate those closest to the explosion. The x-rays don't get very far. They're absorbed by the air. The air is then heated up by these x-rays to millions of degrees. The immense heat expands the air around the point of impact, creating a spherical shock wave and winds that can reach hundreds of miles per hour. And if it were a humid day, you would be able to see that shock wave running along the ground and through the air because it would cause instant condensation. Of moisture in the atmosphere, and you'd see sort of a white ghost of a shockwave traveling through the air. The wind from the shockwave extinguishes the fires caused by the thermal radiation, but will flatten everything in its path within a radius of two miles. Do you get the expansion out? The thermal plume of the bomb is rising in mushrooms. Gone. You know, so hey, that's them scientists, man. They know, they know what's going on, and that's is that scriptural, man. What they was, they know the process of this thermonuclear uh, missile, man, and what is what it's gonna do. Uh, it says, uh, it says, this is Second Ezra, and Salak, Second Peter three and ten. But the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. And you know when a thief comes, he comes un 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 
where nuclear destruction is going to hit you people when you least suspect it or when you're going to be out in the streets doing your folly. In the night, it says, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, right? That's that, that's that missile. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And they just explain the process of that heat, the X-rays, the gamma rays, right? Uh, it says, and the earth and all the works therein shall be burnt up. And they explain the whole process on how it works, man. How it sucks the air in and then sends out the shock waves, and how the helium is is spread it and, and creating that that heat that's uh, hotter than the sun, man. See, all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, man? So we need to uh, basically that's what the elect brothers we we speak on it, we talk to each other, we warn each other, we send videos out to each other. Showing, showing how the, the time drawing nigh, man. You know, it says, looking for and hastening until the coming of the day of the Most High, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and elements shall melt with fervent heat, man. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein righteous dwell. And this process has to take place in order for righteousness to dwell, man. We, this process has to take place in order for us to get the kingdom. You know, thermonuclear destruction, man. Hey, so with that, man, all praise be to the Heavenly Father and His Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, and double honors to the Apostle GMS who rule well. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. It's GMS Stop and Listen, GMS Arkansas. Shalom.